Hi there, and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. This episode, we're straight on to some of the, well, more hefty animals, I guess you would say. Last week, we finished off by adding the grey seal habitat, and I'll be honest, I've had nothing but positive comments about this build for that one, so very pleased it's gone down well. This week's going to be dominated by some of the bigger species, so no quick 300 meter tiny animal builds this week for me. We're starting off with the grizzly bear. Grizzlies are solitary creatures, they do live in just pairs, so not a lot of animals, but they do need a lot of space. Now I've noticed the animal after the grizzly bear is the Himalayan brown bear, and I don't see much of a difference in these two animals. They look strikingly similar and their needs are almost identical, so this got me thinking, why don't I build a dual kind of habitat up by the Formosan and the pandas? We've already got kind of a bear theme going on here. Why not squeeze these two species in on the same row? The terrain's going to continue being a lot of mountain and forest, and we've still certainly got plenty of space back here to fit that in. So I'm going to make something that has the grizzly bears and the Himalayan bears in the same space. They will obviously have their separate spaces, they're not going to be able to cohabitate together. But what if I built a split sort of viewing area that goes into the enclosure a little bit? There was a split viewing area idea I had a couple of weeks ago for the Formosan and the giant pandas and it wasn't working out at all. I completely scrapped that build and started again and we ended up with something that looked really cool for that area of the zoo. So it's not like I minded that I had to start again with that one. But on the other hand, I didn't want to drop the idea totally that I had for that area. So yeah, I obviously didn't learn my lesson with the pain I went through with that. And instead of just coming up with something new for this, I decided to relook at the whole idea of making kind of like a wooden structure building. But this time I figured out the biggest problem I had when I was building the previous one was that I created a courtyard within it. So that was making a grid out of the pathway pieces and that really didn't work for me at all. This time the pathway is a semicircle. Well, not exactly a true semicircle because I'd already put the pathing in for this, the main path, and that means any pathway coming off it is gonna be at a funky angle. That's a headache all on its own because when it's at an angle, you can't use the typical techniques to get a fully circular building. That in itself, it's not a deal breaker for me. It takes a lot more work to get a building in that's on a custom path, not circular or square, but I'm never one to shy away from something that's gonna take a long time to do. I mean, this zoo, in general, we're up to episode 15 already. I've been working on this since early February. Completion? <sighs> I reckon it's gonna be, at the very best, it could be in two months time, I think. Anyway, I'm getting a little off track here, aren't I? And not talking about the build again. My idea with this combined space is that there's gonna be a pathway over the both of the habitats for both the grizzly bear and the Himalayan brown bear. And this is going to overlook a sleeping quarters for them. So guests are gonna be able to go into that path and on one side, they'll be able to look over into to where the bears are sleeping and then on the other side it'll be the standards it'll be a window and stuff that they can look out on where the bears are out in their enclosure as well this design works really well for this type of enclosure because it's a mountainous area again the grizzly bear and the himalayan brown bear they are strikingly similar to look at them from a distance i can't tell the difference their needs as well well that's almost identical apart from one thing that i didn't realize until I put the Himalayan brown bears into their enclosure. Himalayan brown bears, they need snow. That was a surprise. Probably shouldn't have been, but it was. You might be thinking, yes, yeah, so what? What's the big deal? Just put some snow in. The problem is I'm not putting any snow animals into this zoo when it's in an open enclosure. I know this isn't a super realistic zoo, but it really breaks the immersion for me when you see animals and there's snow in their enclosure and they're outside in an environment like this, which is tends to be quite temperate. It's just in no way feasible that a zoo would have permanent snow machines going all 
the time on an outside space. My rule for this zoo is that if it needs snow, it goes indoors. That way it's kind of more realistic that a zoo might be able to maintain an indoor snow area. That meant with the Himalayan brown bears here, I had to quickly make up an indoor snow area at the top of their enclosure for them. Doesn't quite fit in with what I had in mind, but I made it work, I think. I basically stole the design I made for the giant pandas, their indoor enclosure, and just stuck that on top of the mountain at the back of the Himalayan bear habitat. Unfortunately the space inside there isn't quite enough to cover the entirety of their snow needs so there is a little bit coming out the door. With the rules I've got in place here I was willing to bend them just a little bit for that. It saved me having to build a bigger enclosure at the back. The grizzly bears were much easier customers. They were happy with pretty much whatever. A lot of soil, a bit of grass, lots of trees, lots of plants. One of my great joys with Planet Zoo is definitely making these foresty biomes with lots of trees in them. I definitely feel like you've got a bit more creativity with that rather than just another desert one or dreaded grasslands. Grasslands I like that the least because the game is insistent on you must use the terrain paint tool to make your long grass. This obviously was a rule that was brought in before they brought out all these lovely plants that you get for the grasslands now, all the long grasses and the dry grass, things like that. The long grass of the terrain paint tool, unless you're zoomed right in, you can't even see it. So it looks like it's a very plain short grass area from even if you just scroll out just a little bit. Anyway, that would take a big change in the game for them to change something with that. So instead of complaining, I should just be getting on with it and enjoying the enclosure like this one that I feel you can get a bit more creative with. Shall we take a look at the finished enclosures? Here we have the dual, but not quite dual, habitats for the grizzly bear and the Himalayan brown bear. Grizzlies on the right, Himalayan brown bears on the left. This is our two grizzly bears settling in well. I've not long put the bears in, so they are getting used to their environment there, having a sniff around at all the plants and trees and stuff. This is a big enclosure and I've tried to keep a sort of woodland feel to it, so it's all natural stone, rustic wood. Oh, and that's what they were doing up here, having a go at the tyre enrichment item. Go on, let's see if you can flip it. Almost. Meh. Done with that then, eh? I guess. Sure showed that tire who's boss, eh, didn't you? Right, well, we should be talking about the enclosure a little bit, shouldn't we? I got the indoor viewing area finished and I was worried about it for a little bit. It was a bit of a struggle, it being on a weird angle and all. But I got there in the end and happy with how it turned out. It's semicircle-ish, so not quite a semicircle, but close to it. At the front, we've got big windows at an angle looking into the sleeping area. One of the Himalayan bears in there already. Great to see they're using this. Let's take a walk through here as if we're a guest. So you go up the stairs and this gets you over both of the enclosures. So you've got a great view inside the enclosures there, looking at the bears. Great view of both the habitat and inside the sleeping quarter. And if you make your way over to this side, you're now on the Himalayan bear side. Same deal, good look inside the enclosure and looking at them sleeping on the other side of the path. Of course, with the Himalayan bears, there's an additional building up there where I've got the snow. Let's just make our way down the path before looking over there. The way the space fitted in here, the Himalayan bears, they've got less of an open air area to view them in at the front here. It's just how it was positioned, but it's still a decent view enough. Not as much variety in the trees and the plants for Himalayan bears. They only like the, I think it was the bit of taiga and some tundra there. Snow that I wasn't planning on. That's why we've got this extra building at the back. Fussy bears. Ideally, if I'd known Himalayan bears needed snow, I would have planned for this and had something more up front with the building for the snow being where the guests can see it. Not end of the world though. I think I can forgive myself for one enclosure that I forget about snow. Apart from that, I'm pretty glad with how both of these enclosures turned out. I do really like the building I've put in there for guests to view them from. Having them be able to view the bears and the sleeping quarters from above, it's a bit different to what I would normally do. And I do like mixing it up a little bit every now and again. You have to challenge yourself every so often with Planet Zoo, otherwise it'd get boring, wouldn't it? Oh, and look at that. 
That's exactly the view I was looking for. Sleeping bears. Perfect. On the outside, at least. I wonder, how does that look when you're looking at it from the indoor bit of the viewing area? Well, you can still see them, so I'm going to call that a win. With that, shall we call it a day for the bears and move on to the next animal? Oh boy, it's the hippopotamus. One of the heavyweight species, so gonna need a lot of room for them. Now, since the tropical pack release, the hippos, they can be housed with the red river hog. But I know there's some contention on this because some players believe this is wrong. The red river hog share interspecies bonus with quite a lot of animals. So to avoid the inevitable comments that I will get if I do put them in with the hippos, I'm going to leave the hippos on their own. Save the red river hog for one of a number of animals they can share the bonus with. Now, hippos, even on their own, are going to need a lot of space. So I've been saving this space for them. Hopefully this is big enough for them. I guess we'll find out. Turns out the space I planned out for the hippos wasn't big enough for them, so I've had to move the path back. This is a pretty complex enclosure to make because the hippos are very demanding with the amount of space they need. Just like the African elephants, they need a lot of land mass. The problem with the hippos is they also need a huge water area. If I'm not including the habitats where I've got multiple species in the same enclosure, like some of the multi-species ones I did for the African animals, this is probably the biggest enclosure I've created for this zoo. So before I get into the design concept and stuff for this enclosure, I have to point something out. There's a big gap between building the barrier and the final design of the enclosure. If you're wondering what that's about, we had a power cut last week when I was recording and building this enclosure. Yep, I was partway through the build and the entire electricity cut out in my house. That means because it was physically recording at the time of the cut, I lost an hour or so of footage. Thankfully, I'm playing in franchise mode, so the game, the glorious game saves at, I think it's like at 20 minute intervals or something, the game will automatically save. So I didn't lose too much of the build at least. But there is a noticeable jump in the footage from being a basic enclosure to almost built. Sorry about that, it wasn't my fault. Anyway, let me tell you about the concept for this enclosure. In terms of design for this habitat, now I did say in the last episode when I did the seal enclosure, I promised I was not going to do any more underwater viewing areas that were below ground. Well, I broke that in one episode. <laughs> I started out with good intentions to keep that promise. The underwater viewing areas that are below ground are way too fiddly, take loads of time. But with the hippos, I went away and did a little bit of research for this because I've done hippo enclosures before and because they're so needy with the land and the water mass, all the enclosures I've done before end up looking really empty and quite bland. So I thought I'd go out into the real world and see what's out there. What I found in the real life zoos, most of it wasn't very inspiring, just the odd lake and stuff for the hippos, but I found Cincinnati Zoo and they have a dedicated hippo cove that was built only a few years ago. And that one, it looks amazing, very inspirational. And I would recommend everyone go and take a look what they did for their hippos in Cincinnati Zoo. It's a multi-level enclosure and they have an underwater viewing area and it looked so good. I really, really wanted to put something in my zoo that looked a little similar. So here we are again, building a below ground underwater viewing area. To be fair, this isn't anywhere near as deep as the Grey Seal one was. And the pathing, it was a little uncompliant, but nowhere near as much as the problems I had last week doing the pathing for the underwater stuff for the seals. The biggest issue for this one was getting the levels right. As far as I know, hippos don't really deep dive. I had many people on one of my previous videos educating me about hippos don't swim, they just walk along the bottom of bodies of water. So for the underwater viewing area here, I wanted it so that the hippos were partly submerged so that when you're looking in the underwater bit, you can see the hippos with their feet on the ground, but not deep enough so that they're way down from the surface of the water. I thought that would look a bit weird. 
It took me a few attempts to figure out how low the path should be to dip down to that area and how high to bring the glass up so that the water level was at the right height for it all. The way it's set up, the guests go down a path towards the underwater viewing area. This path's on a very slight gradient, not enough that you would even really notice it. So it's not like the harsh steps that we had with the grey seal habitat. Once they get to the lowest point, the guests can still see the hippos at the top above the water level but they also get a view below the waterline and get to watch the hippos waddling along on the bottom of the pool there. A pretty neat idea, I think. Enough to have me convinced it was a good idea to go back and do a below ground underwater viewing area at least. That's the concept of this enclosure, so let's take a look. Here we have the glorious hippos and very much a home already, straight into the water. It's a low water level lake we've got here, so they're not gonna have to be doing any deep diving or anything like that. I thought that would look too strange considering they don't swim, they walk on the bottom of the water there. This is a big enclosure. This in total is about three and a half thousand meters squared. Even with all that room, they're complaining there's not enough space. I've pushed this out as far as I'm comfortable with though, so they're gonna have to live with that. I think they're just being greedy at this point. I've got a couple of different barriers set up along the side of the enclosure, so it's not too monotonous. Hard shelters off to the side here. Also added a keeper hut within the enclosure because there isn't one close by and there's no space around the edges to build one, so I've got it just right at the side here to the barrier in the gate. I love this rope fencing because as you can see here guests well at least the adult guests can see over it so they can see all the way around the enclosure around the other side here so that there wasn't fencing all the way around it I've also put in some glass barriers and got this in between the rock work there that's so at least the kids and the short people get to see as well just like that there you go great view of the hippos from here with the water level not being too deep in here you can see the bottom of the water when you go from a bird's eye view i love the idea of this being kind of a shallow wading pool for them and that ties in nicely with the biggest feature of this enclosure which is the underwater viewing bit this is intentionally very shallow water and not very deep underwater viewing section this means guests can see both the hippo above the water and see them waddling below the water a very slight gradient on the path here allowed me to do this oh and surprise surprise it's raining for some reason it always rains when I'm doing a tour of something I've finished. Hey ho, this is a great view to look at the rain effect on the top of the water there isn't it? Even after three years of playing Planet Zoo I'm still amazed at the weather effects and how pretty they are. You can see a hippo in the water over there so this is the view you get when you look at the underwater bit. You get to see how they move on the bottom of the water there. This feels like a realistic way to do underwater viewing for hippos, so I'm glad I spent the effort on this. It's educational as well as entertaining, seeing them waddling there on the bottom. I think that one's heading for the enrichment. Are they? Nope, I think they're going past. But yeah, you can see there how, yeah, they don't swim, they just wade. So that's what hippos do, apparently. Anyway, I'd say we've had a nice look at the hippo enclosure there. Shall we move on? Another heavyweight, we've got the Indian elephant up next. There's three of these needed in the enclosure and they are going to take up quite a bit of space. Not quite as much as the African elephant, but just like those ones, they're going to need water in their enclosure as well, which is going to add a bit more. In terms of where I'm putting the Indian elephant, they're going to go right opposite the hippos. This is a bit of an awkward space and I've already dug into the ground here so that's going to be something that I have to deal with. The pathing's also on a gradient so yeah that's going to be some fun with the fencing. Let's see how we get on. So I forgot to mention with the Indian elephants they can be housed with the proboscis monkeys and proboscis monkeys can be found in Indonesia. It just so happens Planet Zoo has just added a bunch of Indonesian style architecture pieces so it would be rude not to use them. So for this build I've put in a bit more effort than I normally would for the hard shelter and it's heavily decorated with some of the Indonesian pieces. There's some great new stone pieces with the tropical pack. 
And personally, I think this looks way better than the Indian pieces that you get with the base game. So I've got a big open hard shelter in here that's kind of a ruined building feel to it. I've continued this on with the guest barrier using the Indonesian railing and the I've gone with the rustic stone here rather than the Indonesian stone because I thought it would be a bit too much to do it all the way along the path here. The barrier along the path was a bit of a pain because it was on a gradient and it was curved so that means placing each one very carefully individually and slight movements up and down side to side to get it to go flush with the path. I put the water in this enclosure up at the front so that it creates a natural barrier that the elephants and the monkeys can't get over so it feels like the guests are much closer to the animals than they would be if that wasn't there. I've included a side section of the enclosure here and this is specifically for the proboscis monkeys because with the elephants it doesn't matter if they're a bit away from the guests they're still going to be able to see them because they're huge. For the proboscis I wanted an area up front that they could interact with the guests a little better so I've got some mesh fencing up here because the monkeys would climb over a low fence at this point. I was pleasantly surprised that there was actually enough room in this tiny space at the back for everything to fit in and it meets all of the animal's requirements okay. The enclosure does look a little bit odd because it's quite long and thin which I guess that is a bit weird but it suits the area with that path that goes down in a gradient because I've put the water in front of that. It works for both the elephant's enclosure and for the hippo's enclosure over the road from them. If I was to use this space for smaller enclosures, I think it would look a bit odd the way it was dipped down at the front for all of them. Anyhow, I think it's that time again. Let's go and take a look. An Indonesian inspired habitat here for the Indian elephant and the proboscis monkey living in apparent harmony. Wouldn't have thought these two would go together, but game says they do, so there we are. And just look how close the elephants will get to the humans there. Both the proboscis monkeys and the Indian elephants are confident with humans, so I didn't have to worry about hiding sight lines and all that malarkey. They should both be happy being up that close. Ugh, day to night change. I'm not keen on the sunrise colours in this game. I think it's a bit off. Best time is midday for views and stuff. Anyhow, I've used a low barrier here, using the water as a barrier. Oh, and just a sec, elephant taking mud bath. Don't want to miss that, do we? Because I'm talking about the architecture and stuff. But as I was saying, it's an odd shape for this enclosure I may do with the space I had. The enclosure naturally slopes downwards because we'd already created that depth when we made the hippo habitat. So I worked with that in this one and put the water up front. It works great because the guest barrier is now flush with the path and there's no big gap in between like you sometimes get if you're doing it at a ground level. The water's contained by a glass barrier. You can't see it because it's hidden, but believe me, there is one there. Last section of this enclosure is the Indonesian inspired hard shelter. I think it fits in surprisingly well with the theme of the Himalayan brown bear there, so it doesn't clash too badly with coming from different regions. Rather big space inside here, but you need that for elephants, don't you? I think overall this was a nice little build. I thought it would be more trouble than it was to get it finished, but overall I'm really pleased with it. Hope you've enjoyed these big builds I've created this week. There's a few more to come of those next week as well. As ever, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.